we're going to sing this chorus and we're going to sing that bridge. And if you can identify one unbeliever in your phone, I know a lot of y'all got a lot of them. That's good. Identify if, see, this going to challenge how much you really want people to be saved and how much you really want people to experience his love and his grace. Find one unbeliever in your phone. I want you to turn your camera, your video on. And I want a video, want you to video you singing this song. And I want you to sing to your phone like that person is in front of you. Whether it's a family member, whether it's somebody that went astray, whether it's a co-worker, whether it's somebody at your school. Ask the Holy, you can even ask the Holy Spirit, who, do I, who should I send this to? Let them lead you. But we're going to just take this time, just, just 60 seconds. We're going to sing this chorus, and we're going to sing this bridge, and we're going to go buck wild. Because if you've experienced a love that you could never even imagine, why not share it with? If you've experienced a love that has picked you out of your lust, your sin, your guilt, your shame, why not share it, all right? Y'all ready? You got, you got your camera up. Don't, don't put it on me. They don't want to see me. They want to see you. Even if you don't know the words, just look at the screen and sing along. All right, we're about to turn up. Just the drums. Let's go. Yo, this is the good news. Sing it. If you're breathing, it's for you. An empty grave. An empty grave. A life that has changed. It all points to Jesus. Good morning, Gateway. We're so glad you joined us today. If you're watching online, welcome. If you're here in the house with us, let's stand on our feet and let's worship Jesus this morning. Come on, let's sing Yeah. 
Take heart, hold on, remember who you're singing to. He's still the Lord Almighty, He's still the King of Kings, He's still the risen Savior reigning over everything. His name is still the highest, His strength will never fail, His word is ever.
Lord God, we love you in this place. So God, with our hands lifted high and our hearts surrendered to you, God, we pray that you turn your face toward us and that we fix our minds and our perspectives, our attention on you. Lord God, that your voice drowns out the chaos in our lives right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we speak peace throughout this building and every home, oh God, right now in your name. God, because the blood still works, we believe in the blood. Hallelujah, Jesus, and we bless your name for the blood. So God, right now we ask for a rhema word that it brings revelation and revival into our hearts and into our homes, God, because we need you, God. And we thank you for who you are. So God, fill us up till we overflow in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. What an amazing way to start the service, being reminded that God is faithful. It is who he is. He is good. He can't be anything else. It is his character. And no matter what we're facing, what the world around us is, what's happening around us or our circumstances or our feelings, that God is the one thing that never changes. And we can always depend on Jesus to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a great reminder for me this morning. My name is Kate Adams and I will be hosting you today. And I just wanna say a great big welcome to Gateway Church this morning. We wanna welcome everyone who's joining us online. Thank you for choosing Gateway. Thank you for joining us in your home and worshiping with us. If this is your first week with us, a special welcome to you. You could have gone anywhere else and you chose to worship with us this morning. And I wanna tell you about a connection card. You'll find these in the seat backs in front of you. This is our way to get to know who you are. Give us a little bit of information about yourself so that we can reach out with you during the week. Thank you for joining us and then join you in helping you get connected to this place. Gateway exists to invest in and invite people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We are here for you. The church is here to do just that for you. So when you connect with us through the connection card, we get to walk alongside of you and help you get connected first to Jesus and second to the community of believers around you. So let us know that you're here. And at the end of the service on your way out, please take this card to guest services because we have a special thank you gift for joining us today. If you're not new to Gateway and this is your home, welcome back to church. We're glad to see you as well. And if you've been around for a little while, you know about our connection. Our way to connect with you is through our mobile app um, called Church Center. You can find out what's happening all the time in that app. So make sure you're staying focused on that so you know what's coming, what's coming up so you don't miss anything. But I do wanna highlight two things for you this morning. The first one is our graduation Sunday. This year on May 19th, we're gonna do something a little different. It's not just for high school graduates. We are actually going to honor and celebrate lots of milestones in our church. We're gonna celebrate the kids go, that are going into kindergarten. We're gonna celebrate the elementary school that is now kids in fifth grade that are now moving into our students programs. So if you have an upcoming sixth grader and we're gonna celebrate our students going from middle school into high school. And we're also gonna celebrate those graduating high school, graduating college, graduating an advanced degree. If you are graduating anything and they hand you a piece of paper and say, congratulations, we are celebrating you on May 19th. So let us know if you fall into any of those categories. There's a registration code, a QR code that you can register so we know you're coming. So we're prepared for you. You can find that on the screens, but there's also some QR codes on the back walls near the exits. You can, scan, you can scan those on your way out. So let us know that you're coming. It's gonna be an exciting Sunday of celebration of all the milestones going on in our church. Last but certainly not least, I have a challenge for you. In true Gateway fashion, we like to put out challenges to you guys and you always exceed our expectations. So do you want a challenge this week? Sure, great, because I'm giving it to you anyway. This weekend, we're gonna have the Mexican Flapjack Fiesta. Now this is a way for you to get involved in global missions. A few weeks ago in our mission series, I challenged all of you in global missions to get involved in some way. That we're not all, and we're not all going to do the same thing, but we're all called to do something. So this is something you can do. You can eat pancakes for Jesus. You can do it. So what we're asking is for you to go on our church center app or scan the QR code and you're going to sign up to eat pancakes on Saturday. You can come get a to-go plate or you can come and eat with, eat with us in the lobby. It's real easy. You can eat pancakes, but here's the challenge for you. Are you ready for it? Before first service, we had 49 people registered. Not bad, 
but that's not gateway good, okay? So I challenged first service to bump that number. And I challenged them that if we could get to 150 registered by the end of the Tuesday night this week, that on Wednesday at Gateway Students, right here on this stage, surrounded by all of our amazing students, we will dump a whole lot of pancake syrup on our amazing lead pastor, Sam Martin, okay? But you have to reach the number 150. So after first service, I went back and checked registration. We're up to 89 after first service. So now it's your guys' turn. You got to get us to 150. I know you can do it because Gateway always exceeds our expectation. So if you can hit 150 for registrations by Tuesday night, you, we will then video Sam Martin getting dunked in some maple syrup, and then we will put it out on social media for you guys to see. This is your way to participate in global missions, and it's very simple. So we invite you to do that with us. So I've done enough talking this morning. You guys go ahead and stand. Greet a few people you didn't come with, and we'll continue in worship. about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? Man, you missed one staff meeting. And they're going to dump syrup on me. Listen, I see your challenge, and I raise you. If we get 200 people registered, I don't even care if you show up. Like, I don't, carbs are bad for you anyway. If we get 200, everybody in that meeting gets dunked, and I don't. How about that? Let's do that. You guys with me? Who do you love more, me or them? Or everybody, everybody that's shows up that morning, gets dunked, or syruped, whatever, whatever the word is. Hey, welcome. We are so glad that you're here this morning. Weird with the syrup stuff. Anyway, oh, this is week number three of Are You Sure About That?, where we're talking about certain passages of Scripture that can be taken out of context. Maybe we've heard it our whole lives, or maybe we, this is new information to us, so we'll just learn something new today. But... Um, Last week we talked about scriptures, and we're actually going to take off from one of the ones we talked about last week, which is do, do not judge. We briefly touched on that last week, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more this week. Uh, but this series, are you sure about that? It's the emphasis, now, I, I want to make sure that, because we're going to talk about what the scripture says, and we're going to talk about what's going on and that kind of stuff, but I want to make sure that we understand the, the reason for the series is so that we can, we can know as we're reading scripture or, or as we hear things talk to us or you know, preach or whatever, we can look at that and say, you know what, I don't know if that's, if that's in the right context. I don't know if that's really what Scripture is telling me here. And then we can go home and we can kind of test it. We can read and make sure that what we're hearing is the truth. And so that is an important part of what we do and as we learn and grow in our walk with Christ. So um, that is the purpose of this series. But I wanted to tell you as we, as we begin, uh, a part of this is on May 5th, we are doing... Um, a seminar, I guess. I don't know really what it's what you call it, a class, uh, where hopefully there'll be time at the end for some questions and some answers, that kind of stuff. But we're going to be talking about what does the Scripture actually say about heaven and hell and the rapture. Because, you know, you may have heard all kinds of stuff. Who knows uh, what you've heard or what's been taught. And it may be exactly right, but we're going to talk about what does the Scripture actually say about heaven and hell and the rapture um, on May the 5th. But you need to register. Go on the Church Center app. Register, you can, you can find this on there and, um, you know, make sure you let us know you're going to be here because we have child care and we have, uh, we're going to have food for that night. So we need to know how many people we're going to have, okay? So let us know. May 5th, 5 o'clock right here, heaven, hell, and the rapture. And this kind of came through, you know, we had that solar eclipse and I'm quite frankly surprised that we're all still here because so many people were saying this was it. 
right? So let's talk about it. Let's see what the scripture says about the rapture in heaven and hell. Now, week three of Are You Sure About That? Have you heard that the church just wants your money? Yes, we've all heard this, right? Even if we haven't experienced some negative teaching in the church about money, but we've heard. It's one of the things, it's one of the stereotypes. The church just wants your money. We talk about it all the time. And it's funny. I will get into it. I can't. I stick to the script, Sam. What if I told you, I want to get into the good stuff. What if I told you that if you gave to the church, you would receive financial blessings? You'd get rich. Your materials, whatever it is. And I have backup. I wanted to tell you, I have proof, all right? We're going to talk about Scripture here in just a second, but first I want to talk about this with some backup. I got some pastors who are going to back me up real quick, so let's roll this clip. Because you release money appearing in people's bank account. You release, oh my God, my God, there would be 35000 that's about to appear on Tuesday for someone. I was able to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet cash. Oh, we see right there that God wants us to be healthy. Can everybody say God wants me to be healthy? You're standing up. Uh, 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 God's going to do it for you. God's going to release it for you. God's going to give you the money that he owes you. Money! Come up to me now! That guy, he's serious about it. I like that it said that it was very specific, $35,000. Someone, someone's going to get $35,000 in your account today. This is, listen, the problem with this is, and I'm sure that some of this was taken out of context. You know, it's fun. But we don't give to get, do we? Or do we? I don't know, because here's what the Scripture says. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured out into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's pretty good. So, I mean, it says, if I give, I'm going to get. But I'm not just going to get what I give. I'm going to get, it's going to be, it's going to be shaken down and pressed and running over and overflowing. I love this. This is amazing. This is promoting the idea that generosity gives us financial blessings, materials, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. This is good stuff. But let's back up for a little bit of context because I've heard this preached almost my entire life. And I'm going to tell you, I don't remember, but I wonder if we've done this here at Gateway too. Because, you know, when you get into a message and you use scriptures that, oh, I've heard this, let me use this one. And it's not on purpose. It's not, it's not intentional that we take things out of context, but it, it does happen. Because we're talking about a certain subject instead of studying scripture. And so we want to be very careful, even here, test the scripture. Go home and say, you know what, is that really what it means? It's important. But here's what it says if we back up a, a, a verse. Luke 6, 37 says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. And then it goes to verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, uh, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So what are we talking about? It seems like out of place. The scripture seems out of place if we're talking about finances right after. Don't judge, don't condemn, and forgive people. And then it says give. So what is it talking about? Give what? Well, let's go to Matthew 7, because this, one of the really cool things about the Gospels is there are four different perspectives, and sometimes they're about the same thing, the same event. And we have this in Matthew 7, verse number 1. It says, uh, verse, uh, yeah, 7, verse number 1, do not judge, or you too will be judged. Same exact thing, same teaching. For the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So we're talking about giving grace, giving forgiveness, giving patience. That's what it's talking about here. And it goes on, verse number three. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me, oh boy, I just shut off my iPad. There we go. How can you say to your brother, let me uh, get the, plank, uh, the, the, the speck out of your eye? You hypocrite, first, take the plank out, of, plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So clearly we were talking here about relationships. You know, I, I told this story in the first service. I have a friend of mine who is an amazing person, the most patient, loving, generous, kind person that I've ever met. 
he was my roommate before I got married. And he would still be my roommate, except for when we got married, Katie said, we're not supposed to do that. Apparently, I don't know. I, didn't, I was like, but he's really nice. And he gives me stuff. Like, he's, he's a cool dude. I love this guy. But you know, you know what I know about him? He's got a lot of people that look up to him. He's got a lot of people that love him. He's got a lot of people that would drop whatever they were doing if he would call and need help because he is invested in these relationships. And it's paying him back in dividends. He's had a few different jobs as he's been going. He was going to medical school, and he had a few different jobs as he was in medical school, and it was all through relationships. And they were great jobs. One of them, he actually stopped going to medical school because this was such a great job that he had through, through a relationship. So when you give grace and forgiveness and love and patience, kindness, you get grace, love, patience, kindness. Obviously not from everybody because some people are a little bit more like me. We're jerks who just take, right? No, come on. It's not me. But it's important to understand context because people may try to manipulate and push you in certain directions based on how they read Scripture and teach Scripture to you. We have to protect ourselves. We have to protect ourselves. Now, it also says, this passage, this passage is not all about, hey, you can just be a doormat. Keep forgiving. You don't have to worry about boundaries. Don't worry about that, right? Because now it says, Matthew 7, verse number 6, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So it also says, listen, do not judge. Do not condemn. Give grace, and you'll get grace, right? That's in this context. But then it also says, hey, there's a saying that, I'd heard, that I've heard all growing up. I can't remember who, where, it, where it originated. But here's what it says. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Have you heard this? When somebody shows you who, when they prove to you, I'm this kind of person, you believe them. So someone who's just awful with money, you don't keep giving them money, right? We help them learn how to manage money. This is, so when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. But also, forgive. Give grace, love, patience. And there's no question that we are to help people who can't help themselves. There's no question that we are to be generous. But according to this scripture, in this context, it does not cover finances. It covers grace and forgiveness and relationships. In my experiences, though, the reason that we have to use these types of scriptures is because people, they want to be generous. People want to be generous. They want to help. They want to give. But the problem is, in our society, and we've talked about this before, we have a serious lack of trust. A serious lack of trust. And so I don't give because I don't think, you know, the little bit of resources that I have, they're not going to a good place. And so I don't give because I can't trust. Right? We talked about this a little bit last week where you see the person on the side of the road and you're like, well, you know, they probably make more than I do. Because we've heard the 60-minute story or whatever about people. They change their clothes, get in their Lexus, and go to their mansion. But during the day, they're just panhandling, right? Like, I don't think that's pretty typical. But I don't know. It's what I've been told. But it's not, listen, we don't judge. We help. That's what we do. And we want to. But again, there's a lack of trust. How do I know? I'm going to tell you, listen, New York City, the city known for being rude, right? Keep your head down, cross the street, honk at people, yell at people. And I'm going to tell you, we could gain a little bit of, uh, you know, just speeding up progression and things here in the South. If we would just honk the horn every once in a while. You know, like at the traffic circles or at the with green lights, you know, whatever. Just, it's a little, a polite little, just a quick, you know. It'd be nice to leave when it's green. Anyway, New York, a city where people don't even look up and acknowledge each other. That's what they're known for. Hey, I'm walking over you. Get out of my, get out of my way. This, I deserve this. Right? It's New York. But listen, on 9-11, 
when those planes hit those towers, that was the most united, helpful, sacrificial city in America. Because there's no question now this is a need. People sacrificed. People sacrificed, some sacrificed their lives for others. Because here's a need. I'm going to step in. And I'm going to meet this need. Because I can. And I know that it's a need. So people, you see it. At our core, we want to be generous. And so scriptures like this, it pulls us in. Because I do want to be generous, but also there's a benefit. And so I'm paying attention, right? But we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Now listen, one of my passions, one of the things that I feel like God has laid on my heart is to repair the trust in the local church. Repair the relationship and the reputation that we have with the outside world. And this is something big for me. And it, it, it kind of steers the direction of Gateway. Why we do what we do. And this is important. Why? Because, one of, uh, listen, we are going to repair the lack of trust in the local church. Now, Gateway Church has trust. The community trusts us. If we say something, it's going to happen. If we do something, it's going to be done well. Because we have the most amazing volunteers in the world. I'm convinced. Right here at this place. You know, Gateway was set up in Teardown Church for about 11 years. Every single weekend... We brought a trailer up either to the YMCA or to Godly Station School, and we set up church, and then on Sunday after church, we would put it all right back in the trailer and take it away. For 11 years we did this, and people were just, they were blown away. They were able to do that. I'm like, well, it's just what we did. We didn't have a choice. And we could do this because we have the most amazing volunteers in the world. And now we do similar things. You know, we have all kinds of events here at the church, for the community. In a couple of weeks, I don't know if you guys know this, but we're hosting uh, West Chatham Elementary graduation right here in this place. It's going to be really cool. But you know what? Some of us are going to have to jump in and help because we're not just going to let them have our building. We're going to host them. We're going to show them the love of God. We're going to be generous with our stuff because we don't want them to touch it and break it. But, you know, (laughs) no, that's not why. Because we want, to, we want them to be just blown away by the hospitality of God's people in God's house. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So we do stuff like that all the time. Pool of Karate has their black belt ceremony right here in our place. Do you know how those kids, they just love when they're doing their routines and they're like kicking stuff and slashing things and whatever. I don't know what they do with karate. They're like, you know, all I know is karate kid stuff. But when they're doing all that stuff and then they see themselves up on the screens... Those kids are just like, man, this is, this is amazing. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. The parents love it. But we do it, and we don't charge them because we have this resource. And so we're working really hard to repair the reputation that the church has in our community. And not just, I'm not talking about Gateway because we have a good reputation. Like I said, there are other churches, other people who know if you are hurting, if you need help, call Gateway, and they will help. And I love that and I hate that all at the same time. Like, why aren't you helping? But I also, I love that we have this reputation that we will help. A few weeks ago, we did um, what we call the nonprofit fair. And we have talked about it for, you know, a couple of weeks leading up to it. And it was on a Sunday night. And what it was, it looks like a job fair. There's a couple, there's a 10 or 12 nonprofit organizations that we have that are here. And then a couple that are uh, mission Uh, based in like uh, Mexico and Honduras, but they have a local office here, and so they sent a representative. And so we have people that were here. And what we did was a little different than what we've done in the past. In the past, what we've done is we've interviewed the owners or the representatives for these nonprofit organizations. They got to talk about all the stuff that they get to do, and then we got to spread our people out and just say, hey, go sign up, go get more information. Maybe you want to volunteer here. Maybe you want to volunteer there. There's a picture of one of the interviews that we did. But what we did differently this time is we reached out, we found out, hey, what are some needs that you guys have? And some of them gave us a whole list of things that they needed. And we were actually able to just go purchase, I think, everything that we were told they needed. There's a a company called Excel, one of the nonprofits. There's a table saw right there and an air compressor behind it and a generator. 
We give them a few other things, some sawhorses, because what they do is they go from school or different organizations, and they exist to mentor 15 to 25-year-old people. And so they go to schools and different places, and they teach them trades. They teach them how to do electrical work or plumbing or HVAC. They teach them how to uh, work on cars, welding, all kinds of And then they mentor them just as, as people. It's an amazing organization. Later we found out that they were like, man, I don't even know if we're going to be able to continue going because in Effingham County, we, we just weren't getting the funding. We weren't getting the materials. We weren't getting the stuff that we need to resource our trailers so that we can go and do what we need to do. But because Gateway stepped in, they removed all that stress and they're able to do what God has called them to do. Amazing. There's another, we saw on there, there was an AC unit for a trailer, one of those pictures, and a generator. There was another organization that was here. What they do is they were creating this mobile library, so then they go and mentor little kids and help kids with literacy and reading and, and just be loving to the community. And so we were able to, hey, what do you need? Oh, I need a generator and an air conditioner because we already have a trailer. Well, boom, here you go. We are able to do it. One of the organizations deals with mothers who are uh, pregnant or uh, trying to decide, okay, am I going to give my kid up for adoption or abortion or what's the, what, what, what direction am I going to go here? And we were able to give about 1500 I think $1,500 worth of gift cards just to help moms as they're walking through this process. Because we're, we're, we're here to take care of the babies, but we're also here to take care of the moms. There's another organization that deals with single moms, single parents. And we're given, I think this week we're giving them, I don't know, like $1,500 in just gas gift cards for single parents that just need a little bit of help. Why? So they can get somewhere a little bit, but more so so they can experience the love of God from people that they will never meet. That's what we do. This congregation the services that are all together and the online, this is what we do. And I love it. I love what we get to do. One of the organizations was, they were so frustrated, so just down. Because before this last nonprofit fair that we did, they, were, they had this like, man, does the church even care about anything going on outside of its walls? Does the church even care anymore? And then they showed up and we did this stuff. And it renewed faith. It's exciting to do this stuff. So we give. We give because we can give. We give because we've been blessed. That's why we give. We've done, listen, this is, this is one of my favorite things. I don't know why this is one of my favorite things. It's just cool. We gave $2,800 to the Effingham County School Lunch Program because there were kids who were negative in their lunch uh, accounts. You know, I'm going to tell you why we know that's even a thing. Because my children came home, and they were told by the lunch people, hey, you guys are negative, and I need you to go home and tell your parents to put some money in there. <laughs> and we were like, oh, I didn't know that you could go negative. Uh, we didn't even know that was a thing. And so we looked into it. We gave $2,800 to Effingham County uh, like, well, two weeks ago or so to bring all the kids up to current. And then we gave, we found out that there were some staff members that were also negative. And so there was $737 that we paid for staff members in Effingham County who were also negative on their loan. Man, that is just, that is cool. Why are they negative? Are they now budgeting? They, I don't know. It, uh, who cares? Who cares? It's not for me. It, don't judge. Don't condemn. Forgive. That's what we're going to do. We paid car insurance, electric bills, water bills. We found out there was a single mom who is expecting twins, who is struggling, doesn't know where she's going to get all the stuff. Guess what? She's going to get all the stuff. Only one of everything because babies are small. You can share. <laughs> no, we're going to give her what she needs. Listen, the heart behind this is the loaves and fishes story in the Bible. Jesus, I say this all the time. He fed the 5,000, right? Right? plus women and children. So who knows how, it could have been 8 million people. He fed them all from two loaves and two fishes. Two, so no, it wasn't two loaves and two, it was two and five. But he fed them all from just this little bit of food. But he didn't have to do that. And then afterwards, there was all this stuff left over. There were 12 baskets left over. He didn't have to do that. They could have gone into the cities and bought food. 
But he didn't. He paid, or he paid. He, he bought their lunch. He did. No, he did. The, he, he fed them so that they could just experience the love of God. And you know what the feedback is that we get all the time? Why would you do that? Why would you pay this? Why would you give me that? You know why? Because we want you to experience the same love, the same God that we've experienced. But I may never come to Gateway. I don't even know who, where Gateway, it doesn't matter. I don't care about that. I want you to know that somebody loves you. That's what we're doing. That's why we do what we do. So when it talks about prosperity, when it talks about blessings, listen, that is a blessing. To be able to, to hear that feedback and to, to do the, for people who cannot do for themselves, that is a blessing to hear those stories. For you guys to see these pictures and see, okay, I've been giving and I don't have a lot, but I'm giving to the church, trusting the church. This is why we talk about the stories all the time because I need you to know what we're doing with it. We're not just giving to keep the lights on so that we can gather here together and we can sing some songs and we can worship God and be in our little bubbles together. No, we're doing this so that we can go out and make a difference in the world. That's why we do what we do. James 2.15 says this, Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or daily food. One of you says to them, Go in peace and keep warm and well fed, but has nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? Someone comes and says, Hey, I have this need, and it's a real need. And we say, You know what? That's good. I, I hope that works out for you. I'm going to pray for you. Go in peace and be fed. That's ridiculous. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. We will not be the people that say, ah, I hope that works out. I hope that works out for you. We are going to be the people that make a difference. And now, listen, I'm going to tell you something. That is not why Jesus came. Jesus did not come to the earth, live a perfect life, die on the cross, be buried for three days, rise again at the end of it so that he could feed those 5,000. That's not why he came. That was a benefit. He got to do it while he was doing it, but he was here so that he can tell people about his Father in heaven. He, can, he was here. He, he broke the sins, the, the chains of sin, offered salvation to the world so that we could spend eternity with him after this life. And he says, while we're here, now you go and do what I did. Love people like I loved. Sacrifice like I sacrificed. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. And so we go from that example. We are not here to be served. We're here to serve. We're here to make a difference in this world. And so we're going to do that. So this is why we give, because we are told to give. We're told to make a difference. Now, in context... We're also told that we will be blessed. Here's what 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 says. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will, will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I love this. God is able to bless you. We do this. What is reaping generously? What does it mean? Why do we exist? If we existed to make as much money as we can, then that would be reaping generously. But we don't. We exist to invest in and invite others into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We exist to make disciples. That's why we're here. And so when we give, we give for that. And God will bless. God will bless us. But we don't give to get blessings from God. We give because we have been loved. We give because somebody gave to us. John 3.16 is the generosity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. 
so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And I may have switched back and forth between like the NIV and the King James there. I'm not sure. But that's why we give, because we want people to experience God like we've experienced God. Now, we may be blessed, but we're blessed to be a blessing. Here's also something that I know. Here's what I know. I will give once I make more money. I'll give, I'll be more generous when I have more to give, right? No, that's not how it works. You have all met the person or probably said this yourself. If I win the lotto, I'll give, every, everybody will give, you know. No. If you win the lotto, you're probably going to keep it all for yourself if that's what you do before you win the lotto. Maybe not. But we don't suddenly become generous. We don't suddenly become selfless. We don't suddenly become this once we have more resources or more time or whatever it is. I'll help. I'll volunteer. I'll I'll give my time once I have more time. We never, there's never more time. We all have the same amount of time. How do we manage our time? How do we manage our money? How do we manage our gifts that God has given us? That's one of the scriptures we read last week. We all have a gift. Are we using it? Right now, there are people right here who were greeted at the front doors by people who are smiling. We have the greediest people ever. They greet so well out there in the parking lot. Right now, our children are being taught the love of Christ over here in the kids' area from people who are giving their time, using their abilities. And then on Monday, when we go to work, are we doing the same thing? Are we giving? Are we, are we, are we serving? Are we loving? being generous with what God has blessed us with, being a great example of someone who works hard and is a person of integrity. So we need to understand what it means to be, a bless, to be blessed and to be prospered. It may be financial, but it will be people beginning and growing in a relationship with God. And if that's not the ultimate goal, we have missed the mark. That has to be first in our lives. When people begin and grow in a relationship with Jesus, we're being blessed, we're being prospered. That's not the only ways, but that has to be the reason that we do what we do. We want to be blessed, we want to see prosperity, but according to what Jesus says, not according to what the world says. We're not here to emulate the world. We're here to emulate Jesus. So we give. Financially, we do. We get to do amazing things, and it's awesome. But we do this to bless people and to honor God, to be a part of the mission that we're a part of, not to get rich and to buy our third jet. I don't even have one yet. I'm working on the first one. I'll be working for a long time, I think. I don't know that I need one. If I'm being honest with you, do I, not, I, not, I don't know. <laughs> Delta has plenty. So I'm good there. But as people, listen, we were made in the image of God. We were made in the image of God. We, we reflect that image so much more when we're living sacrificially. That's when we show others. They can clearly see the image of God when we live sacrificially with our time, with our talent, and with our money. When we take time to see what needs are around us and then we meet them or we help. This is exactly what God did when he sent Jesus. He looked at what he had and he sent some of it to help us, to redeem us. That's exactly what we see. And so that's why we do what we do. Not for selfish gain, but for salvation. So that people who are lost and broken and dying and hurting 
and confused can see hope and experience God's love. Let's pray. God, we thank you for who you are and for loving us and for being the example of generosity and love. Lord, help us as we go from here to remember that we are God's people on a mission. On a mission to serve others so that we can see them begin and grow in a relationship with you. Not so that we can get things. God, understanding what real prosperity is, what real blessing is in our lives and help us go after that. Thank you for who you are, for sending your son so that we can spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There's so many things I love about this church. Of all the years that I have been here, it's hard to pinpoint my favorite, but one of my favorite things is the generosity that I have seen this church do in the community and the world around us. And that's because of you. That's because of people like you who hear a message like this and you hear the scripture and the teachings of Jesus and you take it seriously and you go and say, God, how do you wanna use me? Sam reminded us that Jesus came and he gave it all. He was the epitome of generosity in the world, to the world around him. He served. And when he saw a need, he met the need. So what is God calling you to? How is God calling you to participate in this mission that, God, that he's called us to? To see the world around us, see the needs, and to be a part of meeting those needs. So as we continue with the last song and we have this response time of prayer, ask God that question. God, how are you calling me to be generous with my life? Is it through my time, my gifts, financially? What is it, God, that you're calling me to be a part of? And this is a conversation that's only gonna happen between you and God. Only you know how he's speaking to your heart. So take the time during this response time and do that. And then if you make decisions today, if you've reconnected with God for the first time today, please let us know on this connection card because we're gonna do this life with you. We're gonna walk through discipleship with you and we're gonna help you figure out the next steps of where God's calling you to in your walk with him. In this next few moments, we're also gonna be taking an offering. And this is a time that if you call Gateway your home, this is how you give back. This is an act of worship. This is how we continue in worship, just like we worship with music and just as we worship with the message. This is how we worship, by giving back to God and thanking Him for all the ways that He has blessed us. You'll also notice during this time, we'll have a prayer team under each screen to my left and my right. And this is a team of people that loves their ministry. Their ministry is to pray with you and pray for you. Sometimes we don't know how to pray for ourselves, but we have a team of people around us that we can go to and say, will you please pray for me? So I'm gonna pray for us. I'm gonna lift us up and ask God to do what only he can do in our hearts and speak to us so that we can better serve him. One last thing I wanna tell you, because I checked before I came up here. Our pancake sales are up to 96. So good job. We're not to 150, but we're getting there. So keep registering. We're up to what? Oh, 200, you're right. Sam challenged you and I'm not getting dunked with syrup, just to be clear. So let me pray for you and we'll continue in worship. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the challenge that you have brought to us this morning, inviting us to be a part of the generosity that you started in the work of Jesus. Show us and speak to our hearts on how we can be a part of what you're doing. Show us how we can give more of our time, our gifts, our our finances, whatever it is you're calling us, God, we wanna be a part of it because you showed us what generosity looks like. And God, I know you're calling us to be a part of it. So God, I pray in advance for all the prayers that are being lifted here today. And we're gonna thank you in advance for how you're gonna answer them and how you're gonna call us to be a part of the big, the big church worldwide and how you're gonna use us to bring Jesus to the world around us. It's in your son's name that we pray, amen.
Are you glad you came to church this morning? Good, good. Glad everyone said yes. It's a good look. All right. So if you are a new guest with us, first time guest with us, please fill out that connection card and take it to guest services. They have a gift for you. Please join us again next week for week four. Are you sure about that? Listen, I love you, but God loves you best. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Son of God, our Savior slain, and see him now, scars on his hands and feet, come adore the Almighty One, Lion of Judah.